gastric cancer and esophageal cancers together um, form a very complex set of diseases that are often treated alike. They involve a, um, a multidisciplinary approach involving radiation oncology and surgery, and together they're the, amongst the most common malignancies worldwide. Uh, there are about 1.4 million cases of gastroesophageal cancers worldwide, and although they're not the most common in the United States, they're amongst the most deadly. Uh, most patients uh, with gastroesophageal cancers have advanced disease at the time of diagnosis, and we do everything we can to identify these patients early, um, but if, if they aren't identified early, uh, we do have very good treatments to um, address the cancers, address the metastases, and give patients the best chance that they have. Um, the epidemiology of gastric cancer and esophageal cancers um, is heterogeneous. It's, uh, it's quite diverse. So esophageal cancers have come in two forms, squamous cell cancer and adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell cancers typically come from the upper third of the esophagus, and adenocarcinoma are of the lower third usually. People with chronic reflux disease, Barrett's esophagus, people who might be a little bit heavier, um, those patients are at risk of getting adenocarcinoma of the esophagus, and that is very much related to proximal tumors of the stomach as well. The typical stomach cancer, which is a little bit lower in the lower portion of the stomach, is related to chronic infection from a bacteria called H. pylori, or Helicobacter pylori. This is a bacteria that is endemic worldwide. About half the world's population have an infection of H. pylori, and it's a class one carcinogen, meaning it is a known causative factor of stomach cancer. The tricky thing is that H. pylori causes not only stomach cancer, but also, also ulcer disease or gastritis, and often patients can just clear this infection entirely. So understanding who develops stomach cancer with an H. pylori infection is unknown, and that's an area of active research that we have. So putting all this together, uh, we think of gastroesophageal cancers as one malignancy because of the location of the organs, but really they're probably a series of three or four cancers within that uh, area, and we treat them individually. In terms of treatment for gastroesophageal cancers, we um, focus on uh, standard cytotoxic chemotherapy agents, um, you, cisplatin or oxaliplatin and fluoropyrimidines have been used for years. Uh, but even more recently, an exciting ad, um, event was the discovery that tumors that overexpress a protein called HER2 would receive benefit from an antibody called trastuzumab, or also known as Herceptin. So this is an antibody that's been used for years for breast cancer, and only in the last year, year and a half, has it been discovered that it's active in upper GI cancers as well. Patients with gastrointestinal malignancies have options for their care. There are many excellent centers in the city, and I think the patients should go to the best place they feel most comfortable. What we offer at New York Presbyterian Hospital is a comprehensive, multidisciplinary approach that is tailored to the individual. We uh, believe strongly that not all cancers fit in one bucket, and we feel that we have an opportunity and expertise in many different areas to give patients their best opportunity.